Hi guys, I'm currently ed editing this video and um, ignored like the shooting and the weird snarling in the background. I'm currently watching World War Z while I'm editing, but I just wanted to give a quick little warning that in this video I do speak about more adult content. Um, I work at an adult store so and I'm talking about that in this video. So if you are younger than 18, you should probably not watch this video because it does deal with adult content. So I just wanted to give a little fair warning before the video so nobody got their panties in a twist. See ya. Whatever that face was, ignore it. I hated it. <sighs> what you doing back there? Hi guys, I'm Kat and welcome back to my channel. Currently we're sitting in my bathroom because I guess this is where I decided to sit um, and I'm suddenly realizing that the audio may be bad so I need to check. Hold on. The audio isn't great but I don't feel like moving so we're going to sit right here and do the video in here. But hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Kat. Today I... I was literally like, it, today is Sunday and I've been trying to upload every Monday and I haven't thought about a thing to make at all. I haven't thought about what to do, what to say, and then I remembered in one of my videos, I think it was the previous video, I said that I wanted to talk about like weird interactions and questions I've been asked at work because I get asked a lot of weird questions and I have a lot of weird interactions. And so I thought maybe that could be fun and like a really easy video to make um, while I'm sitting in my bathroom. And like, what are you playing with? If you hear like metal on the ground, it's my cat playing I think with a hair clip. But yeah, so I guess that's what I'm gonna do today is just talk about some of the like weird things that people have like asked me or said to me or like weird interactions I've had working at um, where I work. So for those of you who don't know, um, I work at an adult store, which basically um, we sell lingerie and outerwear, hosiery, corsets, shoes, lubes, massage oils, stuff like that. And we also sell adult toys. Um, so obviously you would expect weird shit to happen because I work at an adult store. So obviously weird shit's going to happen, um, whether we like it or not. So there's a difference between weird and weird. So weird is like, you know, people are weird. They have their interests. There's an ass for every seat. There's weird, you know, and then there's weird where it's like, like, for example, we'll get phone calls, usually of men. Um, this has never happened to me from a female, but it's usually men who are literally trying to basically pleasure themselves to the to our voices um, because... I guess it like gets them off or something like they'll ask us really raunchy questions. So while I'm here, once I was on the phone with someone and he was asking me about a specific toy for men and he was asking me like how it's supposed to work, you know, sizing, stuff like that. I thought this was like an honest question because sometimes people do call to ask about toys and stuff like that, whatever. But there's a point, and I know all of my girls can say this, there is a point where they, like, you know it's going to start to get gross. And I felt that point. And basically, he stops, he pauses, there's usually a pause. And then he asks, okay, well, I have it right now, and I have lube right now, so do I just slide it in? And then I was like, mm, that's the direction we're going in today. That's the direction. Great. And then I told him, I was like... Honestly, that's really inappropriate. Um, if you have any questions about the products we sell, I can absolutely answer those questions, but that was inappropriate. And he seemed shocked that I said that. Like, he, he seemed shocked that I didn't want to hear him masturbate on the phone. And it's like, the pause is usually, I can guarantee you, the pause is usually 
them contemplating if they should ask that question. And a little PSA, if you call an adult store being a creepy fucking asshole, and then you pause before you ask a question, how about you go with the side that tells you to not ask that question, the side of you that knows, mm, probably shouldn't ask that, and just don't do it. Hang up the phone. Don't be a dirty asshole and fucking ask questions like that because none of us give a shit. And also, I have your phone number. If I for some reason feel harassed, I can call the police and I can get you in a lot of trouble because I could call that sexual harassment. So, you know, little PSA from there. But just a little inkling of one of the stories I'm going to tell was that one. Definitely, I've had a lot of weird phone calls, but that was definitely one of the gross phone calls because you have categories. I know all of us have categories where it's like weird, gross, strange, stupid, infuriating. Um, so when people ask us, what's the weirdest question you've ever been asked? It's like, you got to pick a category, man. But definitely when, you know... There are times where people do ask questions and sometimes they're genuinely curious um, and it does sound like it's going to go to a sexual place so that it doesn't. But then there's like this weird energy you can get that you just know shit's about to get weird. Speaking of phone calls, this definitely is on the list of some of my favorite things that's ever happened and especially my favorite phone calls because I've got a list of like interactions. So basically the way I feel when you work where I work... You are officially initiated when you have a weird interaction, whether it be on the phone or with a person. And this one is definitely on my list of those interactions. So basically a lady calls and she asks, you know, she's like, hey, I've got a weird question for you. Typically when people say I've got a weird question for you, I promise you, if you go to an adult store and you say that to someone, it's not that weird. We, we get weird all the time. Your question's probably not that weird. But so on our receipts, it says POS customer. POS in the retail world, for those of you who don't know, who don't work in the retail world, means point of sale. So basically it means point of sale customer. It's basically our like, so we do have like frequent buyers and preferred customers and stuff like that. And typically those names pop up on the top. So we know, okay, it's this customer, but a POS customer is just the basic, you know, default of the profile. And she calls and she's like, hey, so can I ask you a weird question? And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever, cool. Well, I didn't say that, but you know, <laughs> yeah, sure, of course you can. And she asked, on, she was like, well, on the top of your receipts, it says POS customer. And I'm just wondering what that means. There was a long pause because this was not the question I was expecting. <laughs> you know, I'm expecting a question about like our clothing or the toys, not that. And I just stopped and then I told her, well, it just means point of sale customer. And she goes, oh, okay, so I can tell my husband to stop freaking out. And then it hit me. I knew that she was calling because it said POS customer. So if you type in, because I did this after the phone call, if you type in the word POS, um, the Urban Dic Dictionary pops up. And the very first thing that pops up is piece of shit obviously, because POS is another way of saying piece of shit. So obviously, he probably Googled it and saw that it said piece of shit, and he thought that we were calling them piece of shit customers. But if you scroll down just a little bit to the smaller definition underneath the big Urban Dictionary definition, it says that in retail, POS means point of sale. So if he would have just scrolled down and stopped being a weird dude, he would have noticed that, but he didn't. And so he had his lady friend call and asked us if we were calling our customers piece of shit customers. Like we're just fucking putting that on our receipts being like, yes, this says piece of shit customer. That's what we're saying. And she goes, so it just means P P uh, point of sale, right? Just point of sale. And I was like, yeah, just point of sale. Flip to literally like a couple of months ago. I think, I think sometime in January, <laughs> this lady comes in and she's trying on stuff. She buys some stuff and then she looks at the receipt and she sees the POS customer. And she said, well, that's funny. And I was like, what? And she said, well, like a little bit over a year ago, I called and asked what this meant. And I was like, oh, that was me. You talked to me. 
I was like, what are the chances of this lady coming back in and I'm meeting her face to face? And she goes, yeah, I was the lady that called and my husband was upset about it. And I was like, I remember that. I re that was That's definitely on my list of my favorite phone calls. And she was laughing with me. It was a great time. But that was definitely one of the moments that was just kind of stupid where it was just like, come on, dude. Like, I know retail can suck and customer service can be assholes, but if you really think a customer, like a brand or a, a company is going to be so brash to put piece of shit customer on their receipts, you're just a fucking idiot then. But that, yeah, it was just one of those times when you answer the call and you're like, you want to tell someone they're stupid, but you don't, you shouldn't, but I did. I wanted to be like, are you a fucking idiot? Are you like, what the fuck's wrong with you? But I couldn't, so... But that's definitely one of my favorite interactions. If we want to go into questions that I've been asked that make you pause and question humanity. Well, this is my favorite one to tell new people that come in and ask me and customers because this is definitely everybody reacts the same exact way. So I had just started where I worked. I was probably a couple of months in and I was in our adult room. And a lady asked me to come talk to her about lubes, so I did. I walked out to help her with the lubes. And she looks at me dead in the eyes and goes, So, like, does this lube work for humans too? Yeah, you heard, you heard that right. She said, Does this lube work for humans too? Now, I'm sure when everybody hears that question, you're going to have the same reaction I did, which was, what? Literally that. Because for a second, I'm like, did I hear her wrong? Did she say it wrong? Like, what's happening here? And I looked at her and I was like, well, it's made for humans. So I don't know what you mean. And she backtracks, gets a little weird. And she goes, well, no, I mean, I know it's, it's good for humans. That's not what I meant. I meant like, can you use this with all toys? It's not what you said, lady. You said, and I quote, if I could rewind and show her what she said, does this lube work for humans too? That's one of the moments where you want to question what they mean, but you're afraid to know the answer, so you don't ask, because I wanted to know what the fuck she was talking about. Like, the lube is meant for humans, so what the hell are you doing with it? And also, do I need to call someone? Should I call someone? I probably should have called someone, but I was just so taken aback by it and I think she could tell because she left she didn't buy anything after that and either she left because she realized she made a mistake and now I'm seeing into her little weird world of things that she shouldn't be doing or we had just like this weird awkward interaction and she was like I'm just gonna go but whenever someone's like so what's like a weird thing that's ever happened to you that's usually the one that I'm like oh yeah so I had a lady ask me if this lube works for humans too and then everybody like looks at me like, what? I'm like, yeah, yeah, same, same. Another question I got was, um, it was basically someone was asking about rope. And they were like, so how long is this rope? And so we were looking at all of our rope to see how long it was. And then she looks at me and she goes, okay, because do you think this is like long enough to tie me around a tree? And you know, my weird ass is like, yeah, of course it is. Like, yeah, it's totally long enough to, like, tie you around a tree. I mean, whatever. But another part of me is like, are you a serial killer? Because I don't think I want to, like, help you with that. But customer service me kicks in, and I say yes. And then she sees my confusion, and she goes, oh, well, my husband has a Yeti thing, like a Yeti fetish. And sometimes, like, in the summer, we like to go up into the woods, and he likes to tie me to a tree. I'm, like, processing, buffering, okay? There's an ass for every seat. You don't have to agree with people's fetishes. We don't kink shame. I'm not a kink shamer. All right. And then I'm like, yeah, we can totally find you some rope that can totally do that. So it's like... I don't know if I help someone with a strange Yeti fetish or... If I help someone buy rope to kidnap someone, but nobody turned up missing 
not too long after that, so I'm assuming I just supplied for the weird Yeti fetish, which that was new for me, because, you know, I hear about fetishes, I've dealt with subs and doms and people coming in with lists, um, they're, the subs coming in with lists of the things that their doms want them to get, you know, I've dealt with that, but I had never had a Yeti fetish, so that one was new for me. I've had a lot of people bring stuff back. So basically at my store, because there are adult stores that are different, which is gross and you should really recheck your policies, but some stores will allow people to return like underwear and things like on the crotch area or even adult toys. Again, check your policies and you should really, you know, revamp that because it's gross. But we don't. We Everything is final sale at our store. Obvious reasons due to the nature of it, obvious reasons. But I had this guy come in, okay? He brings some underwear and it's really nice, high quality, expensive underwear. And it has adjustable sides on it, kind of like a bra strap. So he comes in and he has his underwear and he's trying to tell me that his wife tried to put it on, it didn't fit her, and then she noticed there was a tear on the side and there must have been a tear there before. So this is a hard one because typically we don't take stuff back, but we don't know if an item's been ripped either before it left the store or after it left the store. So I went and asked my manager if that was okay. She said, well, if it was torn before they left, then yes, but it, they can't be worn. I told her that he said they hadn't been worn, but I didn't look. I didn't look. And so we looked together. And not only do we see discharge, we see a brown, dark brown dot, almost like it's blood. And then I'm like, well, obviously, no, we can't bring it back there. Now they've been worn. So me and her, you know, we jumped back to him. And I said, unfortunately, we can't take these back. These have been worn. And he goes, no, they haven't. She couldn't even get them on. And I flipped them inside out. And I was like, they have clearly been worn. So he looks and then he looks dumbfounded. Like what? I went back there, put some shit on it and was like, eh. and he goes, well, or is there anything that you can, and then I said, so we can't take these back. He goes, well, there's a, is there anything else that you could do for me? And I said, no, like these are final sale. They've obviously been washed. There's nothing that we can do about it. And then this is my favorite one. This is my favorite thing that people say in customer service. Well, I shop a lot here and I spend a lot of my money here. So are you sure there's nothing you can do for me? And I'm like, your condescending ass is about to get nut punched right now. Like, Duh. clearly this is what I think happened. This is what happened. Your lady person tried to put these underwear on and they were too small or they weren't adjusted enough and she tore them. She wore them probably through a date or through a night, got a little, you know, aroused, stuff got on it, noticed it was torn, and then you guys thought, well, maybe we can get them to return it because maybe we can tell it was torn. You could have at least washed them. You could have like a little sink, a little scrubby scrub, but you didn't. You just brought them in thinking that I wouldn't look, which of course I didn't look, but my manager looked. She, she was smart enough to look and then I looked. So that was a mistake I made, but, and so it's like, we have a lot of people that come to our store and spend a lot of money, dude. Like, and if you come to our store all of the time, you should know our policy by now because we say it every time you leave the store. You get a receipt, you get a stamp that says it's non-refundable, and then one of us says, just so you know, everything is final sales, so no exchanges, no returns, due to the nature of our store. Every time. So if you've been here a lot spending your money, dude, either you're not listening because we say it every time, or you really don't. But it's one of those things where it's like, people get so mad when we don't take stuff back. They get so mad. And it's like, do you want to come to a store like ours and know that we take stuff back? Is that something that you're okay with? And also, what makes you think that I'm going to change my policy simply for you because you're getting pissy? Like, I don't get that. Infuriating interactions are a big one, too. Like, honestly, this video could be hours.
fucking hours long because there's so many interactions and I've been working there for three years. So one that I just thought of because of that other um, story was, so there was this woman that came in and one of my manager worked with her for like an hour and a half. And then one of my coworkers worked with her for another hour and a half. And then I worked with her for another hour and a half. So basically this woman was at her store for about three and a half hours. And each one of us spent a lot of time with her because, you know, we have different customers and some of them are more needy than others. So, you know, sometimes we spend a lot of time with them because some people like that personal shopper kind of thing. And honestly, we all love dressing people up and helping people find the things that they don't know about, stuff like that. It's a really great time. So we're helping her. We're laughing. It's been a great time until it gets to the time that we need to check out. So basically, I'm helping my coworker take tags, like hard tags and sensors off, backing them up. This lady goes through the entire transaction. The receipt comes up and then she goes, oh, I have a 10 percent off coupon. There's a moment that every retail worker knows where when someone says something like that, Things are going to go one of two ways. Either they're going to be like, oh, well, I fucked up, maybe next time. Or they're going to get really mad at you and blame you for it. So which one do you think this lady was? Just, you know, you know, think about it. But basically, so we're like, oh, you know, well, the tr transaction already went through. There's nothing that we can do about it because the transaction already went through. She did spend a chunk of money. So, you know, it, it, there's nothing that we can do at that point, and we don't have the power at our store to be able to change anything. And so she and starts getting mad. This was a lady, again, that we spent so much time with. and It was all nice. We were great. We were having a good time. It was a good time. But then she forgets her coupon, but gets mad at us for not asking about it. So she's getting mad. She's not understanding that there's nothing we can do about it, like, honestly. And she, I know she thinks that we're just not doing it because we don't want to. And that's usually, sometimes, fun fact, random PSA, just so you know, a lot of retail workers, when they say they can't do it, a lot of the time, it's because they can't do it. It's not because they don't want to. And part of it could be because you're being an asshole. But a lot of it is because they genuinely can't do it. I don't have the power to do what you think I can. I don't. So basically she starts getting really upset and she's like, well, you know, you should have asked me for the coupon. You should have asked if I had it. And I told her, I was like, we hand out these coupons to everybody, to everyone. So like, why would I ask you if you have a coupon? And also, it's like the same thing, like when Arby's hands out coupons, they don't ask if you have a coupon because it's not their responsibility to make sure you use it. It's your responsibility. And also, how am I supposed to ask if you have a coupon if I don't even know if you've been here, if I don't even know that you have one? Well, I didn't say that, but, you know, it's basically like, you know, like, how am I supposed to ask you about something that I don't even know that you have, you know? And so she started to get really mad. Her husband starts getting really mad. And I'm just like, honestly, like, I'm sorry. There's genuinely nothing you can, we can do. You have a coupon for next time. Um, so the next time you come in and then she starts going off about how I'm never coming back in this place. This place is bullshit. Uh, and you're, you're going to see a bad review on like Google or Yelp. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, we spent so much time with you. We helped you with trying stuff on. You came in feeling really shitty about yourself and we tried to make sure that you were comfortable that we found really great stuff that made you look beautiful, which they did. And we found her some amazing stuff and she walked out with some great stuff. And then all of a sudden you forget your coupon and start treating us like shit. And really she wasn't treating me like shit. She was treating my, my associate like shit and talking to her like she was stupid. And then I chimed in, but it's like lady, it's not my responsibility to make sure you've got a coupon. It's your responsibility to make sure to take it out. And if you forget it, you forgot. It's like the same thing for me. It's, I don't expect a retail location or a fast food place to know if I've got a coupon, okay? Because it's not their responsibility to make sure I have it. It's mine. 
So it's like, come on, lady. Like, I don't understand how we can go from a serious 180 of, oh, we're best friends, we're talking, it's great, we're sharing personal stuff, to you're going to get a bad review on Google. This video is going to be 12 billion years long, so I'm going to stop it here. I can do a completely another video on some of the weird things and questions I've been asked or interactions or infuriating interactions that I've ever had. Um, and I know a lot of my girls have had tons of interactions that were just just like that's why I say there's categories it's not just weird or gross it's there's different categories of different levels and we've talked about how when and if we ever go get other jobs the question of tell me about a situation that was really difficult and you had to figure out a way to get out of it like we got that in spades we got all the stories we're gonna conquer that question we're gonna have to ask you know how weird can it get but we are going to conquer that question so easily and that's awesome. But out of every five terrible interactions or weird or gross interactions, we get triple amazing, life-changing, funny, crazy cool interactions that really outweigh and overshine the bad ones, which is great because, because the job can be really hard and I don't think people realize that because there are times where I'll talk to people who do more labor intensive work and I talk about how I'm tired and then they're like well how can you be tired you just do this and blah 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 and then tell me how they do this and they lifted this and whatever and I know that's really hard not saying that it's not but retail is hard because dealing with people is really difficult because dueling energies, people can be tiring. Even if it's a great experience, you're laughing, you're on 100, it gets tiring. At the end of the day, I don't realize how tired I am until I'm home and then I'm like, damn, that was a long, long day. And especially where I work, I work in an adult store. So it's people, it's people plus 10. You know, you're dealing with people's insecurities, body, and sexually, you're dealing with um, sexualities, you're dealing, I live in Utah. Utah has some of the biggest, like the most rules of all 50 states, but also in our state, we're taught that sex is evil and that you're only supposed to have sex in a hetero married relationship. And that if there's any different, you're going to hell. And so working in an adult store somewhere that is like that, you're dealing with things and rewiring people's minds to realize that sex is positive, sex is okay. As long as it's consensual and everybody knows what's going on, sex is healthy and a good time for everyone. No matter what race or sex or sexuality, whatever you identify as, sex is healthy and it's a good thing. And working somewhere like that where you have to help people see that and feel comfortable and it's and I've said it before that you know you're telling a stranger something extremely intimate about yourself and it has to be weird and uncomfortable and it's really rewarding working somewhere that I can do that and so for every weird and bad experience that I've had where I work I've had so, so, so many more good experiences that definitely make me forget about the bad ones until I like really think about them. Um, but they really, the good ones really stick out more than the bad ones. And, um, I can even, I can do another video about all the really good experiences, but that video would also be 12 billion years long. So I don't know. It's been, it's, it's a really great experience and I really love my job and I think I'm really good at it. And you know, I learn new things every day and it's pretty amazing. And so, yeah. But anyway, I'm going to do my outro now. Um, so thank you for joining me in this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to be notified whenever I post a video, uh, you can hit that bell notification and I, it'll tell you, maybe, I don't know. Um, my channel is very strange. It's, I like makeup and spooky things and movies and I like to talk about my job and my thyroid. I like to do reviews, which 
Next week's video is going to be about, it's going to be my two year mark of when I got this done. And I'm gonna be doing a video about that and just kind of like an update on what's going on, the differences in my life, stuff like that. So I guess look forward to that. And yeah, and thank you for joining me. And I hope that you have a wonderful day and a beautiful night. And this is Kat signing off. Bye.